Regard thou the one true God as one who is apart from and immeasurably exalted above all created things. The whole universe reflecteth his glory, while he is himself independent of and transcendeth his creatures. This is the true meaning of divine unity. He who is the eternal truth is the one power who exerciseth undisputed sovereignty over the world of being, whose image is reflected in the mirror of the entire creation. All existence is dependent upon him, and from him is derived the source of the sustenance of all things. This is what is meant by divine unity. This is its fundamental principle. This is the day whereon naught can be seen except the splendors of the light that shineth from the face of thy Lord, the gracious, the most bountiful. Verily, we have caused every soul to expire by virtue of our irresistible and all subduing sovereignty. We have then called into being a new creation, as a token of our grace unto men. I am verily the all-bountiful, the ancient of days. Exalted, immeasurably exalted, art thou above the strivings of mortal men to unravel thy mystery, to describe thy glory, or even to hint at the nature of thine essence. For whatever such strivings may accomplish, they can never hope to transcend the limitations imposed upon thy creatures inasmuch as these efforts are actuated by thy decree and are begotten of thine invention. The loftiest sentiments which the holiest of saints can express in praise of thee and the deepest wisdom which the most learned of men can utter in their attempts to comprehend thy nature all revolve around that center which is wholly subjected to thy sovereignty which adoreth thy beauty, and is propelled through the movement of thy pen. By him who is the great announcement, the All-Merciful is come, invested with undoubted sovereignty. The balance hath been appointed, and all them that dwell on earth have been gathered together. The trumpet hath been blown, and lo, all eyes have stared up with terror, and the hearts of all who are in the heavens and on the earth have trembled, except them whom the breath of the verses of God hath quickened, and who have detached themselves from all things. O children of negligence, set not your affections on mortal sovereignty, and rejoice not therein. Ye are even as the unwary bird that with full confidence warbleth upon the bough, till of a sudden the fowler death throws it upon the dust, and the melody, the form, and the color are gone leaving not a trace. Wherefore, take heed, O bond slaves of desire. The whole duty of man in this day is to attain that share of the flood of grace which God poureth forth for him. Let none, therefore, consider the largeness or smallness of the receptacle. The portion of some might lie in the palm of a man's hand. The portion of others might fill a cup, and of others even a gallon measure. O my servant, Abandon not for that which perisheth an everlasting dominion, and cast not away celestial sovereignty for a worldly desire. This is the river of everlasting life that hath flowed from the wellspring of the pen of the merciful. Well is it with them that drink. Be watchful, lest the concerns and preoccupations of this world prevent you from observing that which hath been enjoined upon you by him who is the mighty, the faithful. Be ye the embodiments of such steadfastness amidst mankind, that ye will not be kept back from God by the doubts of those who disbelieved in him when he manifested himself, invested with a mighty sovereignty. Take heed, lest ye be prevented by aught that hath been recorded in the book from hearkening unto this, the living book who proclaimeth the truth. Verily, there is no God but me, the most excellent, the all-praised. Look ye with the eye of equity upon him who hath descended from the heaven of divine will and power, and be not of those who act unjustly. This is the day whereon the All-Merciful hath come down in the clouds of knowledge, clothed with manifest sovereignty. He well knoweth the actions of men. He it is whose glory none can mistake, could ye but comprehend it. 
The heaven of every religion hath been rent, and the earth of human understanding been cleft asunder, and the angels of God are seen descending, saying, This is the day of mutual deceit. Whither do ye flee? The mountains have passed away, and the heavens have been folded together, and the whole earth is held within his grasp, could ye but understand it. Who is it that can protect you? None by him who is the All-Merciful. None except God, the Almighty, the All-Glorious, the Beneficent. He is a true believer in divine unity who, far from confusing duality with oneness, refuseth to allow any notion of multiplicity to becloud his conception of the singleness of God, who will regard the divine being as one who, by his very nature, transcendeth the limitations of numbers. O son of my handmaid, didst thou behold immortal sovereignty? Thou wouldst strive to pass from this fleeting world, but to conceal the one from thee and to reveal the other is a mystery which none but the pure in heart can comprehend. We pray God, exalted be his glory, and cherish the hope that he may graciously assist the manifestations of affluence and power and the daysprings of sovereignty and glory, the kings of the earth. May God aid them through his strengthening grace to establish the lesser peace. This, indeed, is the greatest means for ensuring the tranquility of the nations. It is incumbent upon the sovereigns of the world, may God assist them, unitedly to hold fast unto this peace, which is the chief instrument for the protection of all mankind. It is our hope that they will arise to achieve what will be conducive to the well-being of man. O son of utterance, turn thy face unto mine, and renounce all save me. For my sovereignty endureth, and my dominion perisheth not. If thou seekest other than me, yea, if thou searchest the universe forevermore, thy quest will be in vain. The verses of God have been revealed, and yet they have turned away from them. His proof hath been manifested, and yet they are unaware of it. And when they behold the face of the All-Merciful, their own faces are saddened while they are disporting themselves. They hasten forward to hellfire and mistake it for light. Far from God be what they fondly imagine. Say, whether ye rejoice or whether ye burst for fury, the heavens are cleft asunder, and God hath come down and vested with radiant sovereignty. All created things are heard exclaiming, The kingdom is God the Almighty, the All-Knowing, the All-Wise. O Son of Spirit, my first counsel is this. Possess a pure, kindly, and radiant heart, that thine may be a sovereignty ancient, imperishable, and everlasting.